afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Google Cloud Next. We are here in smack dab in the middle of day two of the conference. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Rob Strecce. Rob, one of the things that is just so much fun and, and so, so interesting on theCUBE is that we're talking to real organizations, uh, what they're doing with their data, how they're moving their data, that, that's what really keeps the conversation yeah, going. Absolutely, and I, I think, you know, again, this should be a really fun time talking about this because it's about how applicable all of what the announcements have been going on and how partners are really bringing this together with Google uh, and with the customers, with the customer in mind. And I, I think that's really what's great to pull out and because it helps other people when they're sitting at home trying to figure out how do I get started with these things, gives them ideas and seeds. And learnings, exactly. Yeah, well, this is the perfect segue to introduce our next guest. They are Samir Seti. He is the Chief Data and Analytics Officer at Hackensack Meridian Health. Welcome. Thank you for having me. And Brian Doty, a principal at Deloitte Consulting. Thank you both so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having, Thanks for having us. us. Samir, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about Hackensack. Sure, so we're a health, we're a health system based out of New Jersey, uh, 18 hospitals in total. Uh, we spawn, span all the way starting with Hackensack up north and then spread ourselves down. Um, uh, it's, been, it's been a very interesting ride for us, especially with Google, so really excited to have this conversation. Great. Can you talk to us a little bit about your vision and your migration strategy? Absolutely, so, so I function as a data analytics officer. Uh, my job and function is to make sure that our business units, including clinicians, uh, have the data and the insights that, are, uh, that, that they need to run their business, take, take care of patients. Uh, so, so my team focuses on, on bringing the data in from different source systems, normalizing the data, and then developing insights on top of that. What that to me means is that we, we develop the, the whys and the hows out of the data, versus just providing the data to folks. And you, can you just break it down a little bit for our viewers too, what is that data, bringing it in from all sorts of... Yeah, so our, our, our largest data source is what we call an EMR, which is electronic medical record. record. This is what houses, uh, this is the system that houses the, the, the patient information. So the, this is essentially what, uh, uh, what the doctor or the nurse or the clinician is punching in uh, you know, as, a, as, as a part of the process of visiting, you know, a, a patient visiting a doctor. Uh, that, that is our largest uh, data source. We have other data sources, we have imaging data that we bring in, uh, we have uh, data related to people, uh, we, we, we gather data from, from, from outside sources, social media, uh, we have claims data which is the processing of the payment which is very rich as well for us. Uh, so we bring all that in, we try to create one record or one longitudinal view of a patient that starts to show us where the patient journey started, where it ended, what happened with them, and then we start to use it to take decisions. Yeah, how Help us understand from a Deloitte perspective and a Google Cloud perspective, what, how do you get the right you know, stakeholders on board for these types of, types of transformations and yeah. involving, because I mean, again, there's a lot of PII, there's a lot of you know, sensitive data, especially in healthcare. How do, how do you really work with the customers yeah. on that journey? Yeah, well I think the first thing to, to really keep in mind is, although this is, a, uh, is, t is technology enablement, it is not a technology project. Um, but the, the, the transformation, e even just moving from an on-prem infrastructure into the cloud, there, is, there are changes in the way that the organization will access applications, access data, and certainly within the IT organization, there are changes in the way that, that people work. And so, it's really important to engage senior stakeholders early in the process across the organization, set expectations around what, we're, you know, what they're trying to achieve, um, and ensure that they're, that everyone is aligned and that the messaging to the organization is focused on the benefits um, and, and you know, really ensuring that it is a business driven um, and IT enabled uh, uh, initiative. Yeah. And providing access to data is not sufficient. I think what's important is to translate that into insights. I think that's that's what that's what I think you know Deloitte and other organizations help us with. Yeah. Uh, you know, data and for the most part, providing data generally does not achieve an outcome that which is what we're looking for. Okay, so where do you even begin preparing your people? I mean, Brian, you made this great point that this is not just a technology project, this is really a people project and that everyone needs to be on the same page, pulling in the same direction. Incentives, motivation needs to be aligned. So where do you even begin preparing your team for this? 
Yeah, so I can I, I can I can take that. So, first is 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 customer first, right? Whether it be the patient, uh, for us it's the patient. Uh, for us it's the it's the nurse practitioners, it's the physicians, uh, it's the hospital operators. Uh, understanding their needs and building something around their needs is most important. Right, so I, I think I think our approach at Hackensack and, and and the vendors that work with us is, is is primarily first understanding that, and then building a product, a data product, you know, around around what's needed. And I think that 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 allows us to obviously reach our outcomes. It actually increases adoption quite a bit. So I think that's what I think is is what's required. And from from a migration perspective, what was it actually that you were migrating uh, into Google, and what was kind of the the scope of that? Yeah, so uh, when, when I inherited the team, uh, it was a very uh, descriptive team. What that means is that we, we provided data and we started to show up the why, right? Uh, but I think over time we have migrated into, into a mindset and an infrastructure and a technology stack that starts to do some prediction. Right, so the migration for us has been an on-prem, very linear, let's provide the data and some insights on top of it, and now we're getting into the whys and the hows and what will happen. Right, I think, I think that's the migration. Uh, Google has helped us with that. Being on the cloud allows us to go to market with that a lot faster. Uh, when you work on-prem, uh, you're working with obviously fixed cost, but you're also working with fixed uh, compute, fixed machine power. Versus in, in, uh, in, 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 I think, a cloud environment, what we have migrated to, you start to use the abilities to increase power, increase speed, increase processing as, as fast as you need it to. So these projects never go maybe as smoothly as planned. I'd love to for you, Samir, to start talking a little bit about any challenges you experienced, any roadblocks or obstacles that you faced along the way, and then I'd love to get your thoughts too, Brian, about, about, about working with uh, Hackensack through these. Yeah, um, I, I think for us the, the struggles are really get understanding the business. That's, that's always hard. What we have generally seen is what we started off with what, uh, from a concept of what was needed to what we actually ended up with is quite different, right? Can you so, give an example though? That's really, that's fascinating. Yeah, so I mean, it's, uh, the, the example would be, for example, we are, if, if we are in the process of optimizing uh, op our operation room, uh, optimi uh, usage, uh, the OR is the most expensive asset in, in, for a health system. Uh, you know, we generally start off by, by identifying where potentially we can actually fit in more procedures. But as a part of that journey, we start to realize there's, there's things beyond that, right? Uh, which impact, which is, which is you know, how do, we, how do we bring in the factor of, of the patient being ready? Right, how do we make sure that everything else is prepared prior to, to, to surgery? So a lot, a lot changes in that journey. So I think listening uh, you know, to, you know, to, to, to the business units, to our customers is really important. So I'll share a uh, actually very specific sort of tactical example going back to the discussion about this not being a technology project but being you know, a, a change to how people consume data and, and so forth. The, the, the simple, theoretically simple <laughs> process of migrating reports from old uh, technology to new technology in the cloud, um, there, there's both opportunity to look at the reports that you've historically been creating for an organization and rationalize that down to really make sure that you're only providing the, the necessary information, you're minimizing the, um, the, the number of reports. But in, in order to do that, you essentially need to redesign the reports to make sure that you're taking advantage of the capabilities of the new technologies and so forth. And in doing so, you're often um, changing some of the data and the way that it is being presented in those reports. And oftentimes, because it is different than what the organization or the individuals, the end users are used to seeing in the past, even if it is better, or even if we're able to determine that in fact some of the calculations that were historically being used were wrong and the new ones are correct, it still is jarring and there's a lot of resistance to that. So back to the change management and really setting the stage early around the benefits of, of this move, but recognizing that even things that may seem simple are not simple and you have to make sure that you're engaging with the business from day one to make sure that you can streamline those processes and collaborate with them. Yeah. You know, by the time we will be done with migration, we would have migrated approximately 17,000 assets. 
wow. in whole. They'll not end up being 17,000 assets. The reason that's important is our approach is not lift and shift. We are right. not going to you know, bring what was already there and probably working well and then reproduce this. Instead, we will go back to business, ask the questions again, do you really need it? Is it, is it does this solve your problem? And then recreate it. So lift and shift is not an approach that Hackensack is taking. Yeah. And, and by assets, do you mean servers? Do you mean databases? What do you, what do you so, consider? So, so when, I, when I speak of assets, I speak of assets from a, you know, what, what the user uses, okay. right? It could be, uh, could be an alert that gets fired as a part of their workflow, it could be a dashboard, right. it could be a report that they're getting in their email. Yeah. So. No, it's really interesting and I think, well, like, again, moving to the cloud is always, to your point, it's always uh, a, a difference, and it's also probably a difference for your team and how they actually operate and the people and how they have to uh, kind of change some of their skilling. How, how have you approached that as well? Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely an upskilling exercise, right? right? Uh, how you operate in cloud, I, the, 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 the analogy that I use is, you know, when you, you buy, uh, when you're on-prem, if you leave the meter on, it doesn't cost you any more for the most <laughs> right. part, right? Whereas if you leave the meter on on the cloud, it continues to charge you. So I think optimization of how you use cloud infrastructure is really key. Uh, and, and, and Deloitte and other organizations actually are helping us with that. We don't do it well. What's, what's, uh, at the end of the day, we are a healthcare organization that caters to need of patients and their families. And I think it's important to have the right partners who can teach us how to do it. Well, speaking of reskilling and upskilling, I want to ask Brian about what you were talking about earlier and making sure that it's the senior stakeholders, that the message is coming from top down, that we have set expectations and that people have an understanding of what their role is and how, yes, things will change, change is hard, but, but we can do this and there's reasons we're doing this. Can you talk a little bit about how you uh, help leaders understand their role and the yeah. importance of what they're doing and making sure that that messaging is getting through to, to Hackensack's leaders yeah. as well as throughout other organizations too. Yeah, and, and what you're really talking about is change management yeah. and not technical change management but organizational change ma management. And we spend a lot of time up front in, in conversations with the client really emphasizing the importance of that change management and really discussing the role that every leader in the organization plays uh, in, in both setting the, the foundation for that change and frankly you know, giving, giving folks permission um, to think about things new ways, in new ways and also to ask questions and, and challenge um, you know, the, 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 both the way that things are being done and really just continuing the, the conversation there. I think um, you know, the, the tone needs to be set from the top, but it is going to be implemented by the teams. And that empowerment and the, the, the clarity around decision making and decision rights is a big part of that. We're not going to second guess every decision that the team makes but we want to make sure that the decisions are being made with a consistent understanding of the end goal. Um, and that's what, that's what change management really is, is, is establishing the foundation, building the um, sort of the case for change, and then empowering teams to really take the organization through that journey. How, do you, how did you decide to go down this journey? How, how did it all begin? So I think, uh, I think two things, one is, uh, you know, we are a very large Google partner. We started our journey with Google around five years ago, which is when we moved to work, we are our workspace tools uh, into, into GCP. And I think over time, uh, you know, we have seen how, you know, being on cloud has, has, uh, has, has helped us through that relationship with Google. We got introduced to what cloud can do. And for us, what that means is being, being able to go to market as fast as, as we can. Uh, you know, there aren't any limits for us today, at least from a, from a hospital perspective, on, on, on finding the servers and the machines that we need to process data and make the insights available. So I think what's, uh, you know, the decision for us was around being able to find the capability that allows us to go to market fast. That's been the journey for us, right? That was a decision point for us, is we no longer wanted to limit ourselves to purchasing servers, managing servers. Instead, we'd rather work with organizations that do it much better than us and are able to provide those resources to us by, you know, by swipe of a credit card, right? So we go online and it is a, there, there, there's a platform, we say we need this machine, this size, this memory, this storage, and it gets available to us instantly. That helps us quite a bit, because that's one problem that's gone. There are other problems, obviously, that's the, the, that we have to solve for, but at least that's something that we don't have to worry about. 
And it also gives you a professional development opportunity for your teams. Absolutely, yeah. You're taking yep. some of the you know, more uh, sort of rote activities off of their plate and allowing them yep. to focus on the upskilling yep. and sort of moving into the future, yep. which I think is a, is a really important um, sort of you know, retention and, and, uh, and training tool as well. It's making their jobs more interesting right. for them and, exactly. and more they, satisfying too. They get too. to focus on really the higher yeah. order activities, the more strategically important things as opposed to having to do the keep the lights on sort of activities that can be. Well that's yeah. just what, to, to, to piggyback on that, my questions for you is what has the response been both for the team and as well as the patients? It's been amazing for us. Uh, you know, I'll speak to this from a perspective of hiring and retaining talent. I think, I think having the right technology in place uh, keeps our, our, our workforce engaged. You know, the, the folks that we generally work with are, get very excited over technology, so having the leading edge technology through Google, I think has, has helped us retain amazing talent. As you can imagine, these folks that work for us have a choice. You know, they could go across the river and, right. and, and work for the technology companies, but if you make that technology available for us, there's a bigger mission, which is they have, that they have the technology platforms to work on, and they're helping save lives, you know, help people live better, sometimes die better, right? So, so, so there's an advantage to that. So I think, I think that's, been, that's been pretty huge for us. From a, from a patient perspective, I think the digitization of, of, of data or availability of data or insights has been a lot easier as a result of everything that's happening here. Uh, that's been a huge advantage. Usually in the past that was a, a very large blocker. It took us really, a really long time for us to put things in place. And I think the, through a cloud journey and, and, and I think this technology company's taken a big part in making and enabling that need, I think just go to market has improved. So, uh, so we're here in 2024. What, is, what do you see as kind of your, your goals or where you hope to be next year when you're here at Google Next and hopefully on, on the cube with us? Uh, you know, for me, I, I'm, I'm hoping that we're not going to have a migration conversation, right? That would have been done and dusted <laughs> with, right? I think with Deloitte's help, I mean, these guys have been really awesome in telling us how to do it and create a factory around it. So I'm excited about that. Uh, the second would be, I think, AI. That's the theme here, right? Uh, I think uh, we, you know, the, the, at Hackensack, we, we tend to divide our AI use cases into three buckets, operational efficiency, uh, decision support, and patient experience. Uh, I think we're making some major moves around operational efficiency and decision support. Uh, what we haven't done a whole lot is, is make moves or make AI available that is more patient facing. So I think next year I would love to be in a position to say that we have actually deployed some use cases in production where we feel that there's, there's safe AI in place that interacts with patients directly. Uh, we will have to create some sort of way by which there's human, human in the loop, that's absolutely needed. Healthcare is a very human-centric uh, business, uh, but I think that's what I'm excited about. Next year is for us is all about uh, you know, creating AI applications that are patient-facing. Do you have any advice for other? Uh... Um. Well, I think that uh, the, the first piece of advice, particularly related to data uh, and, and the migration of data, is take a look at current processes. Um, I think that many th this cre this presents a real opportunity to um, improve upon the legacy data assets that you already have in house. Um, it is very, very important as you move into the world of AI and more advanced uses of this data that you are. Very, that, that the data is trustworthy, that it is clean, um, that it is, it is well governed. So stay, take a step back and make sure that you have the foundational processes in place. Um, and if not, to design those processes so when this migration you know, from on-prem legacy technologies into the, the new world of cloud occurs, you're, you're ready to make sure that you are appropriately maintaining that new asset and that you won't have to deal with issues of trust and issues of quality as you, as you really take on the next order, uh, next order opportunities. Yeah, and absolutely, and we're taking full advantage of that, by the way. You know, as, as a part of a migration journey, we're looking at you know, ways by which we can do automation. You know, instead of doing manual ways by which we were bringing the data in, so I think absolutely, and obviously governance is a big piece for us as well. You know, this is an opportunity, true opportunity for us to look at what we didn't do well in the past, and as we built in these new assets or rebuild these assets, that we factor all those things in. Wow, wow, that's powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah incredible. Well, Samir and Brian, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. This has been a great conversation. Yeah, thank you very much us. for having us.
I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Stresche. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of Google Cloud next. You are watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.